Hi guys, good evening. Good evening to one and all. Welcome you all in this emerging technology webinar. Uh, guys, please note we'll wait for more five to ten minutes as we are waiting for other participants to join the webinar. I repeat, we'll wait for more five to ten minutes as more participants to join the webinar yet. So we'll wait for them and we'll start the webinar within five to ten minutes. Thank you. Thanks for your patience, guys. Thank you. Uh, guys, please note we'll wait for more five minutes as participants are still joining the webinar. Uh, those who have connected just now, please note we'll wait for more five minutes and we'll start with the webinar. Till the time you can do one thing, you can go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on our social media platforms. I will be sharing the links in the chat box for you all.
Also, I will be sharing the links for the upcoming ETT webinars, that is Emerging Technology webinars in the chat window. So you can register yourself for that. Okay, we are good to start now. Uh, good evening, guys, and welcome to this emerging technology webinar on developing framework independent web component using lit. So Chaitali here, your host for this emerging technology webinar. So I will be there throughout the session to guide you or to help you. You just have to uh, go and write your queries or question in the chat window speaker and i will be there to help you out with your queries and questions uh, so talking about our today's event sponsor synergetics so synergetics learning is india's most distinguished learning company in it technology uh, we are ready with our top class learning solutions that can be ready to made to fix every requirement in every sector across the industry around the globe. Uh, we have our expansive greenfield solutions like onboarding add-on solution, personalized onboarding solution. Then we have certification solution, certification plus add-on solution, latest technology training solution, an emerging technology training solution. So today's webinar uh, topic comes under emerging technology uh, technology training solution. Then today's webinar is organized by ETC community that is emerging technology community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. So our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technologies. You just need to follow our meetup group, which is an emerging technology community for all. Uh, for that, you just need to install the meetup app on your phone or on your device and follow our community. So you'll get the update about our upcoming events, meetups and webinars. 
then the code of conduct that you all need to follow. Please note, no one is allowed to take this screenshot of the presentation while the speaker is presenting his screen. And no one is allowed to do screen recording as well. Uh, to get the recording, to access the recording, uh, you just have to subscribe to our YouTube channel, the official YouTube channel. I will share the link in the chat box for you all. So you just have to go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll share the recording on our official YouTube channel. Today's speaker for this webinar is Mr. Makran Bohir. He is an MCT Microsoft Certified Trainer and Practice Head at Synergetics. He has years of experience in delivering trainings on latest and emerging technologies. Then we have agenda for this webinar. You will get an overview on this topic and more. Then we have upcoming ETT webinar schedule. As you can see on the screen, that date and timing has been mentioned with the topic. I will share this detail in the chat box with you all. So you can go and register yourself for this upcoming ATT webinars. Also, don't forget to follow us on our official social media platforms like uh, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube channel. Then we have Facebook page and Twitter page as well. So make sure you go and do follow us to get the relevant updates on the webinars, workshops, certification trainings, which we do. That's all from my side. Thank you all. Now I will hand over the mic to the speaker so he can continue with the webinar. Thank you. Hello. Am I audible to you? Yes, Makran, sir, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. So, hey, all, uh, you know, we'll start with the session now. Uh, let me share my screen. Once it is visible, please uh, do let me know. I hope uh, my screen is visible to everyone. So, in today's webinar, we will discuss uh, about. Uh, how to create a web component, uh, you know, and basically what is an idea of a web component, you know, okay, and how to create uh, a framework independent web component you know, by using a lift. Okay, so before uh, getting into the topic, uh, let me introduce myself to you. Uh, my name is Makran, Makran Koi. I have around uh, 16 plus years of teaching plus development experience. And um, no, I'm, uh, you know, as specified by Chaitali, I'm MCP Microsoft Certified Trainer, as well as um, Microsoft uh, Azure DevOps Engineer, as well as uh, Azure Developer and Azure Administrator. So let's get started, uh, you know, uh, with this topic, uh, where topic for today is as as you can see. Uh, Makran, sir, sorry to interrupt. Your screen is not visible to us. I have shared that screen. Uh, can you guys see my screen? No, we still no. can't see it. Now, is it visible? Yes, yes. Okay. So I was saying, um, we will discuss in today's webinar, you know, um, developing a framework independent web component using Lit. Okay. So we are going to talk about uh, you know, something about Lit. So uh, Lit is developed by a Google team. Okay, 
and it is uh, quite a some time uh, you know in, there in the market uh, so it's uh, the first release uh, was there in the 2015 you know, and we are into 2023 so there is quite a some time you know um, uh, that lit is in the market you know but people have started noticing it uh, you know okay just few years back okay so when the concept of uh, you know uh, web component uh, development become popular you know uh, so as you can see uh, the framework like angular and react are the popular framework for developing uh, any kind of a, a ui in javascript javascript based framework okay and those kind of a framework is based on uh, the component based architecture you know so the framework like angular and react uh, you know, made the concept of a component based architecture okay so that's why you know okay people started noticing the lit you know okay so there is a need of developing a web component you know which i can include in any kind of a framework which is which is maybe a framework uh, agnostic or i can include in plain javascript you know okay so i can create a web component in lit that we can include in any kind of a framework okay as well as in the plain javascript also okay so we'll discuss about that so uh, we are having a presentation okay uh, so after we done with our presentation uh, you know i'll just show you a, a few uh, sample you know examples i will execute those example okay and i'll try and explain the concept uh, using those example as well okay uh, so this is the agenda for today's session uh, can you see So this is the agenda. Uh, we will discuss uh, what is web component. Okay, then uh, why do you need a web component? Along with that, what is lit? Okay, and why should I use lit? Why should I consider using lit? Okay, uh, then we will discuss uh, you know uh, features of lit, and then we will discuss uh, how to create a lit component and some of the additional concept of a, a lit. Okay. Okay. So if you see, web component uh, is a suite of uh, different technologies allows you to create a reusable component that I can reuse in any kind of a you know framework. You know? So web component. Is a suite of different technologies allows you to create a reusable component. You know, so we can create a web component, uh, you know, uh, using a browser API also. You know, so uh, we have a browser API, you know, uh, to create a web component and to work with that web component. You know? So. So whatever be the browser API, you know, so that only will be extended by the lit framework. You know? So lit framework uses browser API. So rather than working on the low level browser API, okay. So we can we can use a uh, you know handy and simple a lit API. Okay. So I'll repeat uh, web component is a suite of uh, different technologies which allows us to create a reusable component which I can reuse in many framework. Okay. Then the web component functionality encapsulated uh, you know, from the rest of your code. So this is one of the uh, you know important feature of uh, the web component is that you know the whatever be the web component you will create you know so and you are going to include in some kind of a 
you know html okay so whatever web component you will create that will stay away from your rest of the code okay so web component you know uses basically a concept of a shadow dom okay? so this can be achieved by using a concept of a shadow dom you know? and i'll just show you uh, what is shadow dom you know? uh you know during our examples during our uh, uh, uh practical okay so look at this i repeat functionality can be encapsulated away from your code okay away from your rest of the code okay if you include a web component you know so for example uh, let's suppose say you are having an application you know, over here okay and let's say you have created uh, a web component uh, you know, by using a lit okay and you want to use this web component over here okay so this web component uh, you know defines okay a javascript class okay so so the name of the web component can be anything okay and inside this javascript class we will encapsulate what whatever be the attributes whatever be the javascript code whatever function methods you know as well as you know uh, for this web component whatever be the css we will encapsulate everything related to that web component in this class itself and i will expose that class okay so we'll define um, you know uh, the tag name for the class okay and this actual class okay and after that we will just go and make use of these you know web component inside this okay and let's suppose say this is your html file okay let's say this is your html file and let's say this is your index.html okay and index.html will also have additional css okay so additional css okay so those css will not clash from this css so why because you know your uh, web component is designed in such a way that you know it is going to use a concept of a shadow dom okay so this will whatever be the styling related to this web component stay encapsulated in the web component itself it will not clash in the outer world okay and once i create a web component i can reuse you know in html file or i can reuse that same uh, web component in the react okay same web component in the angular you know? so once you create this web component it is reusable okay so once web component is defined you know it is reusable once we define we can reuse that web component okay so i hope uh, you are able to understand now okay so let's me so then uh, why do we need a web component so we are already uh, you know answers so so it is easy to customize and standardize the style you know okay so we have already said this part okay so why because your style will remain encapsulated in your web component you know? it will not clash the outer you know calling you know code okay uh, then second point is web component support you know, by all the modern browsers you know? okay so web component has support uh, you know, okay to the all modern browser except uh, internet explorer which is uh, nowadays you know, okay uh, people are not using rather than internet explorer people are using you know edge okay or other uh, browser like uh, firefox or google chrome okay so which has a support to the you know all modern browser okay 
third point it is and framework independent you know it is not framework dependent i can reuse once i create you know uh, so since it is only a javascript you know, okay so we can create uh, the web component in a javascript using lit you know okay or uh, or lit can be uh, you know uh, we can we can code a, using lit by using a typescript as well as using a javascript okay so whatever kind of uh, you know code you will use okay so the finally you know web component which you go and create by using lit it will become a framework independent okay? so i can reuse that you know code in any kind of a framework or any kind of a javascript language also okay and uh, it can be accessible uh, you know uh, so accessibility feature means what you can access that web component uh, from you know any browser okay so then uh now next part we will discuss uh, about you know, okay what is lit okay we have understood a basic of web component Okay, what are web component, and why do you need a web component? Okay, then we'll understand the basic of lit. Okay, so lit is a simple library. You know, it is a library. Okay, so lit is a simple library. for building you know fast lightweight web component you know so whatever web component we can create uh, using a browser api you know same kind of a web component i can create by using the lit framework because lit will make uh, you know us to create uh, a web component little easy you know okay so it is going to make uh, creation of a web component simple why because it provides a simpler api for mm. doing that okay so let this simple you know it is going to allow us to eliminate the boilerplate code okay so that we can concentrate only on the logic okay and uh, we can just provide what we need to become you know okay productive okay so let uh, will make a creating a web component lot of easy you know so that you do not have to you know okay jump into uh, the low level uh, browser api okay then if you look at this point uh, you know building you know is faster so let is uh, having a tiny footprint okay so so as per uh, you know um uh, the public uh, comparison okay a uh, lit is uh, around 8 to 10% uh, uh, faster than react okay because uh, you know because of it uh, you know lit html okay so i'll repeat one more time lit is 8 to 10 percent faster than react as per the public benchmark uh, comparison okay so uh, if you if you just go and uh, you know go to the website called as bundlephobia.com you know you can see okay so it is going to have a lot less a uh, footprint you know so for example i'll just open that uh, website and show you bundlephobia.com okay and if you just go and check out uh, the lit okay so this will uh, calculate the, how much size how much bundle size you, know, you will have you know once you go and minimize minimize our zz you know so it is it is around only 5 uh, to 6 kb okay so lit helps 
to keep your bundle size very tiny, very small. Okay. So lit helps to keep your bundle size of your project uh, okay to be a small. So when you go and create a final, uh, you know, uh, final deployable of your project. So as compared to uh, React or as compared to uh, Angular or as compared to other framework like Vue, you know, it will be you know, very tiny. You know? So hence it will have a faster uh, load time. So you can load your application as compared to the other framework, you know, very, uh, very fast. Okay. So vis-a-vis, -vis, if you just check, look at uh, other Framework like uh, view, you know, so view is having you know, lot more than that, you know. So lit is having six KB, view is having fifty nine KB around. Okay, if you just go and check out uh, a React, okay. So along with the React, uh, we need uh, one more thing, one more library, React uh, DOM. Okay. If I'm using React, so React is having only 2.5 KB, you know, uh, but uh, along with the React, we will use uh, the React DOM also most likely, yeah? okay. If you are not using any kind of a router cost concept, yeah? okay, then at least we will use a React DOM, okay. So, if you just go and see, React DOM is having around 42 KB. Yeah? And if you just go and see uh, the Angular, So Angular is having around uh, you know, 62 KB. You know? So that after uh, minification. Okay. So once you create a final deployable and you know, okay. So this framework at least will have you know this much of size. Okay. So as compared to Angular, React, Vue, or any other framework, as compared to that, you know, okay, lit is very lightweight. You know, as the name suggests, what lit. Lit is very lightweight. Okay. So hence the name is Lit. Okay. So nowadays, uh, you know, okay, uh, Google is very aggressively marketing the Lit. You know? Okay. So you can compare Lit with React. You know, uh, so you can very uh, closely you can compare Lit with React, or you know. Lit can be included in the React application or any other, you know, uh, JavaScript framework also. You know, so it can also, you know, okay, be included as part of uh, you know, developing a, you know, reusable component along with the React. Okay. So, I'll repeat, what is Lit? Lit is very simple library for building fast. Okay, fast. Why it is fast? Because because it is having a lesser, you know, or which is having a tiny footprint. Okay, so weighting it around five to six KB. Okay, and it will help us to bundle your, you know, code. Your final bundle will become, you know, okay, very tiny. Okay, and hence it is easy to load on the browser okay every lit component uh, you know what what you create in the lit every lit component is the standard web component only okay so for creating a web component in uh, using lit uh, i I do not need any kind of uh, additional frameworks or additional languages. Like for example, uh, you, know, you are using uh, JSX, okay, uh, for creating a React application. You know? So you do not require uh, any kind of uh, uh, middle languages for creating a component in the lit. You can create it uh, using a JavaScript only. Okay, and uh, you know that we can. Uh, 
that every browser can understand. Okay. So once I create uh, uh, a component using lit, you know, I can just go and uh, you know, execute it on any kind of a web browser. Okay, and I'll just show you uh, in page. In this short, very uh, just a second, we'll just uh, see that example of uh, how to create a lit application. Okay. So as I said, as I discussed uh, with you, uh, lit eliminates the lot of boilerplate code so that uh, you know you can concentrate on only uh, on the business logic. Okay, that is because of uh, you know okay the API which is provided by the lit. Okay, and uh, these are some of the additional features of lit. For example, lit allows you to create uh, you know reactive. Okay, lit provides us like reactive state, scope style, declarative template, you know, okay, fast and expressive. Okay. So, reactive state means what? Uh, reactive state means, uh, you know, I can, uh, so if you, if you're coming from a react background, you know, you can able to understand what is reactive state, you know. So whatever be the state of the project or state of the component, you know, okay. So let's suppose say, and I'll give you one simple example. So for example, okay. So in this state, in, in this web component, you know, this is web component I have created. Okay, so this web component I have created maybe as counter, Web component. Okay. And maybe there is a counter variable which is defined in the state. You know, and you can consider state is nothing but you know JavaScript object. If you look at it in the React perspective or in the lit perspective, it is not more than JavaScript object. You know, state is a JavaScript object. Okay, in that uh, I can maintain different kind of a properties. So, for example, I'm maintaining you know, inside a JavaScript object. You know, okay, maybe counter value. Initially, that counter is initialized to zero. Okay, and I am having a button over here. Okay, so once I click on that button, okay, so this will help me to maybe increase the counter. Okay, and uh, this will, you know, okay, also display that counter value, you know, on the UI. So this is where, you know, okay, so it will display the counter value on the UI. You know? So what do you mean by reactive? So as soon as you update the state, okay, as soon as you modify the state, you know, okay, so that state changes will be recognized by the lit, okay, and those state changes will be reflected on the UI, okay. So once you modify the state, it will go and modify the UI, okay. But remember that it will not modify or it will not repent uh, the entire document object model DOM tree. It will modify only that portion, you know, which which is updated. You know, so this will modify only this updated part. You know, this is not going to modify. Okay, the entire DOM tree. You know? And as I said, lit HTML, you know, is eight to ten percent faster than React DOM. React virtual DOM. Okay, so please keep in mind, you know, it is eight to ten percent faster than React virtual DOM. You know, so reactive state, scope style, declarative template. And fast and expressive. So we have understood what is reactive state. You know that means 
whatever be the content of the state and if it is modified the content of the state it will update on the ui you know it will modify the ui by re-rendering the component okay so once you modify the data from the state it will re-render the component okay and i'll show you uh, how this is re-rendering okay second point is uh, scope style as we discuss you know that component uses a shadow dom okay so you know lit also uses you know under the hood you know uh, for creating a web component and you know if you create a web component by using a browser api or if you create by using a lit api okay it will use a shadow dom Okay, so this will make your style to stay encapsulated inside a component. You know, it will not affect to the outer, you know, outsider uh, or calling component. Okay, so this is very important benefit uh, in the UI, you know, in the web development because there are a lot of point. Uh, we will be using uh, common tags like div, h1, you know, okay, paragraph. Okay, the UL, LI, okay, the maybe order list, tables, okay. So that component or those tag I will be using within the HTML or within the HTML that is present in the web component as well as, you know, within the, you know, calling code also, you know. So if you're having a style, you know, define for that, uh, you know, okay, table H2 UL, okay, so which is over here, and you are also having over here, so this will clash, of course, you know, and this will uh, take the effect of, uh, you know, uh, this, <laughs> okay, if you're not using that component, okay, so then this will always give you a preference of, you know, this, if it is not included in the web component. Okay, so since it is included inside a web component, you know, your style remain encapsulated. You know, so lit provides reactive state scope style. Okay, then declarative template. You know? So uh, lit template, you know, based on a tag template. You know? So for example, um, I'll give you uh, one example of this. You know? So this, you know, based on a tag template. So for example, um, if you're having, so let's say over here, I'm just declaring one function. Okay. Test template. Okay, and that test template uh, is receiving uh, the first parameter it's going to receive as array of a parameter. Okay, and if you just go and you know uh, print that uh, array by using console.log or by using you know, wherever you want to display and use the API. You know, so I'll just consider I'm just displaying by using console.log. Okay, and you can call this, you know, template like a normal function call. So what is normal function call? You can just go and call like this and you can send uh, any kind of a parameter. This this is normal function call. You know? Or we can use what, uh, uh, you know, uh, templates. Okay, or we call, we call is that, uh, you know, uh, in the, in the in the templating word we call this as tag template you know so lit based on the tag template okay so using tag template are simple okay and it is it is very expressive so rather than calling this like a function you know we can just go and call this like okay test template no, and we can pass any kind of uh, argument over here. Okay, 
and so this will this will execute this function you know so this is the concept of a tag templating you know and lit uses you know this concept very extensively the concept of a tag templating you know so it will allow us to declare our templates and uh, you know ultimately it will allow us to call that template by using a um, you know tag called as html if you want to display that you know if you want to apply a css we can use a, a tag called as css okay and we can make use of that you know so this is very important feature so you will see this um, when i show you that practical okay or I'll, I'll just show you right away because in the practical i'll show you different example so if you are just going into the browser and if you just go and declare a function okay and first of all i am taking more uh, the array as a parameter and so lot log i'm using and i'm printing that array in the console and i'll just go and define this okay. so you can call this by using test template like this okay. and you can send the parameter okay like this okay so this is your you know, template you know, tag templating what what we called in javascript okay so this is the you know tag templating concept uh, in the javascript and uh, lit follows the tag templating concept uh, very extensively you know? so whatever number of parameter you can send it uh, you know? okay so for example you are sending uh, let's say any kind of expression maybe one multiply by two okay, plus four minus two any kind of expression you can specify okay you know so when you pass an expression you know it will pass it in the different uh, you know parameter you know? so this is your okay this is your um maybe dynamic expression so this dynamic expression will pass as a second parameter so whatever be the value of a dynamic expression you know so it will result in the second uh, parameter or second array you know and whatever be the static template you know it will pass in the first parameter okay so for example okay. so you can see this so now that array contains multiple element okay and whatever be this expression this will become a part of uh, you know okay my second uh, argument which i did not include it over here okay. so if you just want to see so let's redefine this as values Okay, um, we can use values, uh, we can use the rest operator. Let me just go and print this over here. This is not allowing to edit. Properly, so you could just go and do it. The dating part over here. And if you say over here, if you just go and print values array, it can just go and take any kind of a value. Okay, and if you just go and call 
particular using this way, you can see. So look at this, the first parameter or whatever be the static, uh, you know, part of this template will be included in this first array and whatever be the dynamic expression will be included in the second array. Now, so let is going to use, uh, you know, the concept of uh, you know, tag template. OK, so that's the point I want to show you. OK. Uh, so let me repeat uh, once again. Uh, it is very simple for use. OK. So it is very fast, lightweight web component. Uh, you know, I can create by using lit. OK, every lit component uh, follows a standard web component API only. Because ultimately, um, you know, uh, while creating a lit component, uh, you will be, you know, creating a JavaScript class. And that JavaScript class, you know, you will be extending it from uh, lit uh, element, and that lit element is internally extends HTML uh, element, you know, and HTML element is the one which is uh, used for creating a, a browser-based web component. You know, so it's actually uses uh, okay uh, the lit you know a web component uh, standard. OK, it eliminates the boilerplate code. OK, it provides us you know, the active state, scope style, and declarative template, OK, making it uh, very expressive. OK. So let's see how. Um, then why do I need, you know, OK? The lit. OK. So we have uh, answer already, you know, the half a part of it, uh, you know. So we can develop, you know, just like any kind of a UI, OK, uh, by using a lit. OK, so we can develop just about any kind of a web UI you know, with lit. OK, every lit component is a standard. Web component only. Okay. So we can develop any kind of a UI. It is a standard web component so that I can you know, use with any browser so that I can use uh, you know, it with uh, any kind of a JavaScript or any kind of a framework. If I am having existing you no know, project you know, I can reuse that component in existing project also. OK. So. Web component has a power of interoperability, which means, you know, uh, which can be supported uh, by all modern browsers. OK, so. It is not uh, like. Uh, once you develop a web component, it will work only in Chrome and it will not work in you know, uh, the Firefox. So mostly it will work in all the modern browser. So it has the power of interoperability. Lit component can be used in any HTML environment. OK. With any framework. OK, or none at all. Or I can just go and make use it in normal JavaScript also. OK, or I can use it uh, in normal HTML language also. OK, so this is uh, you know, powerful benefit of you know, using it. You know, and this makes a perfect choice. Lit is a perfect choice for designing any kind of a shareable web component. OK. Or designing any kind of a you know, system. OK. So if you want to design a shareable web component, OK, you can go and make use of lit. OK. Or if you want to design any kind of a scalable UI, OK, or scalable UI or what, uh, maybe maintainable UI, you know, 
you can you can go and make use of this uh, lit lit framework. Lit framework is ideal for creating you know uh, big maintainable application. So that we can you know maintain this uh, uh, with uh, very less work. Okay, uh, so I hope you're understanding, guys. If I can't see any kind of queries on the chat box, I hope you are listening to me, guys. If yes, uh, please, can you just please raise your hand if you're listening to me? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Prabhat. Thanks, Prabhat. Thanks, Lokesh. Yeah, thank you, guys. Okay, uh, then let's move to the next slide. So we already discussed uh, the features of lit. Uh, lit is simple. Lit is fast. Lit is lightweight. Okay. Simple, why? Because it offer some API using which, you know, creating a web component becomes simple. Fast, why? Because the final uh, bundle size is, you know, up to five to six KB kilobyte. You know? So, you know, ultimately my load time will be faster. Okay. And, uh, you know, it has a feature you know, of reactive state you know so because of that reactive state uh, you know okay the updates also you know uh, become visible on the ui that is also faster then it is lightweight you know okay because of its size bundle size it is lightweight okay so there are a couple of ways, uh, you know, you can install a lit, uh, you know, on your development environment, uh, you know, or uh, you can go and make use of uh, some kind of a play group or some kind of a, uh, a, a play uh, playground, uh, you know, in, in the lit website also. There is uh, some kind of a, you know, okay, uh, interfaces will allow you to create a web component and if you are, to able to play in that web component over on that website itself. Okay, so if you want to see that, I'll just show you uh, that URL. I'll just give you that URL in the chat box. Just a sec. I'll just give you this URL also in the chat box so that you can just go and show this. Yeah, this is bundlephobia.com and the next one I'm going to give you <coughs> the lit.diff. Oh, sorry, lit.dev. So this is the website. Okay, you can explore this website uh, after the session, you know, because a lot of things are available over here. Okay. So there are many examples you will see. Okay. And uh, you know, all those examples you can try out in the uh, playground. Okay, if you, if you do not have a, you know, a, the setup ready on your local environment, you can just go and try out this uh, on here also. Okay. So we can get lit by installing it as a NPM uh, package. Okay. So by using uh, one simple command NPM install lit, you, know, you can say npm install lit but but for using npm uh, you should have a node install on your machine okay so once you are having a node install 
you know, once you are having a node with you, then you can use, uh, you know, npm install lit and you can start uh, using a lit. You know, if you are not having a node install with you, you know, okay, and uh, uh, most probably uh, you would like to use this lit uh, by using a normal JavaScript only. You do not want to use a TypeScript. Okay, if you're using a TypeScript, uh, then uh, you should have uh, that node because using a node only, you will be installing the TypeScript. Uh, okay, and once you uh, sorry, you will be installing the TypeScript package by using the npm. Okay, and uh, once you have a you know uh, TypeScript package, then you will be able to use what TSC compiler, TypeScript compiler. Okay, and ultimately uh, TypeScript from compiler will also go and you know compile that uh, to a JavaScript only. Okay, so for this session, you know we are going to use only JavaScript. You know, so I will show you, you know, with the JavaScript. You know, so lit is also available as a you know pre-built single file bundle. Okay, which you can find okay on this web on this web uh, CDN you know website or you know URL. Okay, so bundle are the standard JavaScript module with no dependencies. You know, so these are only standard JavaScript module. Uh, with no dependencies. OK, so uh, modern browser should be able to import uh, you know, them and uh, should be able to run this bundle. OK, so modern browser should be able to use this, should be able to import and should be able to uh, use the components which are or template uh, function which are present inside these. OK, so for most of our work, you know, we'll be using only this. OK. The lit core, you know. So this part is only available with you, you know. If you're doing npm install, so if you're using what npm install lit, or you know, if you're using uh, this directly, if you're referring this, uh, you know, CDN URL directly, then it's just one and the same thing only. You know? So once you do what uh, npm install, it will locally available. Okay. So that uh, you can able to use what uh, from the local project will be able to use uh, the import of uh, all the APIs which are present inside this list. But if you're using this, then of course you have to point to that uh, you know URL while importing this. Okay. So there are two ways, uh, you know, two uh, popular ways in which uh, you can get this. Okay, and that is also available on the uh, website. I'll show you where it is available. If this will get started. And if you just come over here. So you'll be able to use like this. So if NPM I lit, you know, and then you will be able to use you know, like this. OK, so. HTML, lit element, you know, CSS, you know, all these are the templating functions. We'll be using it from a lit. You know, so you will be able to use it like this if you are installing like this. Okay. And if you are using that CDN, you know, so you'll have to do import, you know, like this. And for using this way, you have to you know, connect the always to the internet. Okay, if you're pointing, of course, to that CDN. You know, you have to point to that uh, you know, internet. Okay, or else you can also go and download that and you can keep it locally if you want uh, to download this. Okay. And so you're having two URL, one for you know core. And one for uh, you know, uh, all other apart from four you are having. You know? So if you just go into this web link, you will find uh, you know, all that uh, you know, uh, CDN link. You can just go and explore this also. I'll just give you this also.
Okay. And as well as I'll just give you the link of this also, that documentation page. Okay, uh, so we'll be using this way uh, in our example. Yeah. So then uh, let us see a you know, um, couple of example now. So let me switch back uh, to my my editor vs code so i have just uh, created a vs code you know and i have a uh, you know, few example uh, created for this session okay so i'll be going through um, uh, almost all the examples so if you just look at this uh, this is plain javascript file okay so what we are having a plain javascript file you know and we are doing what we are doing you know only okay import of lit element css html from this url okay so from this url okay and while creating a web component, you should go and create a ES6 class only, ECMAScript 6 class. You know, so in the JavaScript, you have to create a class. Okay, the name of the class can be anything, you know, which require to extend a lit element class. You know, so if you just look at lit element is the class, you know, which is part of the lit framework so over here you're having a lit element lit element is going to inherit you know there is one more class called as reactive uh, element okay. and that reactive element you know uh, is going to ultimately inherit uh, you know, okay, uh, so your html you know, element okay. so i'll just mention only few things so let's suppose say now you are having over here. I'll have to redraw because I lost it. I'll just redraw it quickly. So you're having three things. You know, so if you just draw three boxes, I want to show only three boxes over here. Yeah. So, so this is your welcome element. Okay, so welcome element is inheriting, you know, the lit element. Lit element is a part of, this is the part of the lit framework. So this is, the part of the lit framework. Okay. And, you know, so lit element is going and in, inherit HTML element. Okay. So HTML element is a part of, uh, you know, uh, the browser API. So this is the part of browser API and you know the lit framework you know inherits browser API HTML element. Okay, and uh, it has you know lot of uh, code present, lot of abstraction which is provided by to your web component by using a lit component. You know, so whatever be the boilerplate code, you know it is taken care, of. and you have to write only uh, you know okay few things. Okay, so inside your web component, this is you know, your web component. 
So this is our web component. What is this? So this is our web component. So we are creating it. And this is the class which is provided by lit. Okay, and this is the class, or actually this is an interface pitch. Okay. This is a class by browser API. Yeah. So while actually creating your class, you will be inheriting the lit element okay and you will be declaring what you know your properties okay like this you know so you can declare your own properties like this okay and ultimately you have to have one you know render function present inside this welcome element class and this render function actually renders whatever be the output of this okay on the browser okay so this is using what html template or html templating you know function it is using so in the html templating function this as a parameter i am passing you know, and whatever as a parameter you are passing it will just go and print it uh, on the web browser okay so as of now, you just look at this. OK, so this is the web component. OK, and actually, once I declare a class, you know, I have to define this web component by using custom element. So window window dot custom element dot define function. And this is the name of my, you know, OK, uh, the custom element. And this is actually where my custom element is present. Yeah. So actually, we can go and create. OK. So I can just go and create. A simple JavaScript file. And if you want, you know, the lit template to be included. You know, so for the development purpose, you know, uh, it is recommended to add a, you know, extension. To the VS code, we have added already an extension, lit extension into the VS code. You know, so if I just want to make use of lit template, okay, so it will give you what ready made uh, content. Okay, so once you have ready made content with you, you know, so minimum thing you require only render function. Okay, and inside this, maybe, you know, okay, so maybe I'll just use what H1. As hello. Can you see? You know, so you have de declared a simple lit component. So since lit is not available on my local uh, project in the form of a node project, it's not available. So I can't do it like this. You know, I have to use what CDN URL. You know, so you can use this URL. Or this URL. So I'll just make use of this core URL. You know, let me just go and make use of only this. Okay. Remember one point. You know, so while creating your custom component, um, you know, it should have um, you know, um, the multiple words included inside that. You know, so maybe. Um, I think uh, hello, if you use it, uh, it will not work. So it should have something like this. Hello element. So once you create that hello element like this, you have to include this, HT, uh, sorry, uh, this uh, JavaScript file into your HTML code. Okay, uh, like a normal script, <clears throat> like normal JavaScript. Okay. So we have to include a script. Okay. 
and uh, in that uh, i'll just go and type src equal to hello dot uh, js and which should be of type module you know? okay so we are including these uh, you know import statements so you know uh, we should include this type as a module okay and once you do that you know you can go and make use of hello element okay and once you do this you know you should be able to see the output of hello element if i just go and run this on live server okay so we should be able to see you know okay the output of that hello element okay. so i'll okay. so you can understand this uh, you know and let's suppose say i'm over here uh, also i'm having h1 tag okay so flow from index.html okay and let's suppose say i'm just including some kind of a css over here okay so I'm just including the CSS in the style. And I'll just include H1 and I'll just include color. Okay. Color equal to maybe and let's say brown. Okay. Isn't it? So if you just look at this, this will come in a brown color. Okay. But if you just go and include what uh, hello HTML, you know, okay, just look at this. This is also including what, uh, you know, H1. Actually, this is also including H1. So this, you know, uh, whatever will be the CSS you applied to this HTML, this is not having an impact on this. You know, so for defining that CSS, I should go and define it over here itself. Okay, so inside this, I should have a CSS defined like this. So let us go and define that CSS over here also. In this case, I'm just having it H1. Okay, color as okay, uh, maybe black. is already there maybe color as black and if you see this uh, something so I Think we should have a constructor also. We are initializing the constructor. CS is not required. So you can see this. So this, this, and this, you know, all of them are using the same tag, but uh, using a different CSS. Okay. All of them are using the same tag, but uses different CSS. So it is having a you know scope style, you know. So whatever be the styling, which will not clash to the calling calling code, you know. And it is very uh, easy to develop. Uh, you know, this way. 
so if you just look at uh, every time uh, you know so you call this so this will call a render function okay so every time you call uh, this hello function okay so this will call render function okay or uh, every time i modify that uh, you know the component hello component this is going to call that render function okay so as of now i'll just show you you know once only so if you refresh you will get a render function called okay but if you are changing that properties uh, you know changing the state property you know so your render function will be getting called repeatedly okay so this is very very simple to create web component okay so i should have a class which inherits from lit element okay and only requirement is i should have a render function okay which should render in some data so this is i'm using html template function and i should define a function uh, component custom element dot define is a browser api okay and i'm using hello element and the name of the class this is the lit api okay and this is i'm having you know okay the part of a lit uh, okay so only this much uh, you know, is requirement at least to create a bare minimum component okay so anyway sir uh, i i will share all those examples uh, whatever i am uh, i'm showing it to you all those examples uh, you no know, i will share it to you uh, maybe after the session okay uh, now the next part uh, you know, let's see some you know the programming concept like uh, you know handling events okay uh, how to check condition how to iterate uh, you know uh the loop how to create an array you know so those concept uh, uh, let's go and see this quickly so that how can we create it uh, by using a let you know so in this i'm having another web component okay and this web component you know declares a property okay so what it declares it declares a property okay and inside that property i'm having a count okay and count you can consider you know okay um, it is included uh, you know as a property only okay so so as soon as you go and modify you know something inside this okay so this property you know so then it will re-render you know this component so if you modify you know this property or if you modify some sort of a state okay then it will help us to re-render this component okay so as of now what i am setting it into the property i am initializing the property as zero okay by the way i can pass that property from the html also while calling this uh, you know element okay so if i do not pass that property value then it will initialize to zero okay so very first thing as you uh, must be knowing it will call a constructor and constructor how many time it will call it will call only once you know so whenever your uh, component is about to load or right after your object is created you know for my element class okay then it will call you know, your constructor okay 
so constructor it will uh, help you to initialize the data member of the class and this will call only once okay uh, for the entire life cycle of the of uh, the component right after calling a constructor you know there are many method you know i have commented okay that will call okay but in this case this is going to call right after calling a constructor this will call a render method you know so from the render method you know it will help you to render the output of this web component you know so this is going to display what term um, one button okay and one label okay and i'm using the expression you know so i'm using this dot count okay i'm using this dot count okay i'm using this dot increment okay so as soon as i click on this button you know so initially it will show me whatever be the count value it will show me you know so uh, if i do not pass the count value as a parameter as a property you know then it will initialize to zero as soon as i click on this you know okay button you know can you see this is the way you can handle the event okay so at the rate click okay so that's the way you can handle the event you know so uh, there is one function who is listening for that event so as soon as you click the increment function is going to call and increment function will increment the value of the counter okay and as soon as i increment the value of a counter you know okay it will change the ui okay so this will only change this part only you know so not touching to the rest of the ui you know only modify this part okay so now let me just go and execute this first of all okay so i do not initialize i will just go and open you know as it is okay and if you just go and click okay so you can see it is modifying the ui okay and you notice this this is not uploading or this is not uh, reloading the page you know? you know so this is kind of my you know uh, spa single page application you know so it is not reloading it is only you know uh, updating the content you know and if you just look at uh, the developer console of this page if you just come inside element okay, my element you know there is something called as a shadow root you know so this shadow root will have some uh, you know some something called as a shadow dom i'll just show you that is available for this also so if you just open this so go to the developer console and you can see that shadow dom is available for you know, this you know, elements also and if you expand that shadow dom you know whatever be the content we have used you know for creating that component we can see that dom and uh, you know, whatever be the css which is applicable for this this is not uh, going to be clash so you can see this uh, for this you know, there is a h1 and no css is getting clash okay and uh, for this h1 you can see that w css is getting applied and for this h1 the one which is present in the you know, that is brown css is applied so there is no uh, strike through on that uh, css property 
Okay. Okay. So that is because of shadow DOM. Okay. So lit component make uses of a shadow DOM. Okay. And that happens over here also. Okay. You can see this. Uh, it's a click me button. Okay. You can see this is a label called as click counter. Okay. And this is the, you know, uh, the expression value which I'm using, the counter value. So as soon as I go and click on this, you know, so this will only modify you know, this part only. This will not touch this DOM element. Okay. Only modify whatever part you are updating from the page. This will modify only you know to that part. Okay. So wherever you have referred this uh, you know counter, you know it will modify that uh, you know uh, part. Okay. I hope uh, you know it is it is understanding. So what is going to happen once I go and you know click on that button? So once you go and click on this button, that's increment function is going to call, and once you uh, increment you know uh, the counter value to one. So, so this is going to become one. So you know, no matter if you change the uh, property or if you change the state, okay. Uh, so changing the property or changing the state, uh, you know, it will just go and uh, update the UI. You know, so I have referred that counter over here. So this will update this part, and once you Update that part, you know, you can see that render method is getting called you know, again and again. Can you see this? You see this once again. So constructor and render method is calling. Now once you click on this, you know, render method is only calling. Okay. To repaint the UI. Okay. And render method is only, uh, you know, okay, uh, modifying only uh, that updated part only. Okay, so there are several other lifecycle method, you know. Uh, few I have, uh, you know, displaying over here. So first, you are having should update, you know. So this is going to take a decision. This, uh, you know, lifecycle hook is going to take a decision uh, whether your component uh, needs update or not, you know. So of course, should update is going to call before your render method, and after the should update returns the true, you know, then only it will call a render method. You can see this. So I'm just uncommenting this. I'll go back, stop it. I'll clear the console. I'll just execute it again. After calling a constructor, it will call should update and once that should update returns true, this is going to uh, call render method and render method will display this out. You know? So once you go and click on this, this will call should update and render method will update it. Okay, so every time you click on this, you will see this. Okay. So if you are uh, doing some, you know, conditionally displaying some something, for example, just using one flag. That type declaring is optional, but I'll just declare it as Boolean. And
I just make it as true by default. Okay. And maybe um, maybe inside this, I'm just doing what this dot flag equal to not. You know, and I'm returning. You know, so what this should make, you know, so once you click on this, uh, you know, uh, by checking the you know flag value, this should return you know true or false. So whenever it is returning true, then only the updated uh, UI will be displayed. Otherwise, you will not see the UI. Okay, let's see how it is working this time. I think this is stopped working. Okay. The first time only I just said this is not the right place to do it. Yeah, I'll just do it inside a render. So once you click on this, okay, should update will call. Okay, and then uh, after that, it is going to call should update only. Now this is not modifying this dot slant. Okay, uh, so I'll just go and try one thing. Otherwise, we'll move. Just go and see what is the value of a flag which is getting displayed. So every time it is showing me only false. It is showing me much of false. That means it is not calling. So this, I think it is not a good place to do it. So I should do it in the increment on click of the button. Huh? And the pursuit and out. I should do it inside. On the click of a button. So I'll do that on the click of a button. No. So. Now, if you just go and reload this page, you know, you can see this uh, is showing you other true. And once you click on this, you know, okay, this will make a uh, false and that UI is not updated. Once you click on this once again, this is going to make true and that UI is updated. Okay, the value is also, uh, you know, incrementing uh, twice. So can you see now the value once you click, the value will become three counter value, but the uh, flag will become false since your UI is not updated. Once you click once again, value of a flag will become true and counter value will become four. Then your UI is updated. You know? So my point was to show you this is whenever your show should update method, you know, is going to return true, then only your update of UI will happen. Okay, if it is returning false, your update of UI will not happen. Okay, so should update is the you know uh, lifecycle uh, method, or you can say it has a lifecycle hook uh, you know you're having. Over here, it is using as a lifecycle method. Okay, so right after uh, should update, you know uh, your will update will get called. Okay, right after will update, you know, your uh, first update will get called. If you're doing that update for the first time, it will call first update.
Okay, right after first update, we call update method, and it will call every time update. You now this will call only first time update. This will call, you know, you modify the component every time it will call update. Okay, and finally, uh, you have you know, updated uh, you know, method. This is going to call that updated method. So let's see this now you know, once again how it is working. You know? So if you just go and refresh this, this is going to call a constructor for the very first time. And this is the only time we call constructor. After that, should update, it should return a true value. Then only the further thing will happen. Okay, it is returning a true. You can see this. Then we call will update. Then we call render. Okay, then it is called update and first time update. Okay, now once you click on this, okay, the UI is not going to uh, modify. Why? Because my uh, flag value will become false. You know. And should update will return false. And once the should update returns false, other part will not execute. Once you click on once again, what will happen? My flag value will become true again. Okay, and should update will return true. And then it will trigger will update, render, up, you know, uh, update, first update, it will not call second time. And then it's going to call on the method should update. Okay. So every time you click on this, okay, this is going to call. You notice that constructor will get called only once. First update you know, will call only once. Once it is you know, first time updated. Okay. So you have to play in just like React, you are playing. You, know? okay. you have to create the application you know, in just like React. You are you know, creating an application, but um, uh, in the React, uh, whenever you are doing the code in the React, you are going to do, uh, you are going to use what J6. You know, it is just like JavaScript, like XML you are using JSX. You know, so J6 require that you know compilation, and there is uh, you know one compiler, transcompiler uh, is used Babel. So Babel is going to convert that uh, JSX into a JavaScript, and once that compilation is done, you know uh, you will be able to uh, your browser will be able to recognize that uh, okay JSX or that JavaScript. You know, so that additional step is not here. You know, it is not included over here. Okay, and that is uh, you know one of the reason why your uh, lit is more faster than React. Okay. Then I'll just show you uh, the next part. So there are, you know, uh, like for example, if you want to use uh, some kind of uh, you know, conditions, you, know, you can use like this condition, you know. So if the value of a username is present, then display the value of a username. You know, otherwise, you know, don't display anything. Okay. Otherwise, do not display anything. One more, uh, you know, uh, expression you can write. Uh, you can see this random method. If the value of a username is present, then once a condition is true, you know, then it will print this welcome user. Otherwise, it will just go and give you, okay, uh, this uh, please log in. You know, so you're kind of using a ternary operator. Yeah. Okay. But since this is a JavaScript, you can use a normal if else also, normal for loop also, switch case, while loop, you know, everything. You know? But uh, those things you can't use it in the render method like this. You know? Okay. So if you want to use them, you will have to use it in the, you know, okay, uh, the other functions. 
or if you have to use them inside, you know, okay, outside this HTML function, HTML template function. You know, so for example, if you look at this one, this is calling get user message. Okay, and inside this, I'm checking whether username is present. If it is present, then print this. If it is not present, print this. Okay, so it's a simple uh, conditional statement I'm using it. Okay, like this, you, know, you can make use of uh, some list, you know, okay. So you can see I'm having an array. Okay, and I'm printing that array using unloop. Okay, how do I printing? So can you see this? I'm just using a for loop. Not I'm not using it in the uh, you know uh, in the uh, HTML template or HTML template function. You know I'm using it uh, you know outside. I'm using it before return. You know I'm preparing and what uh, you know uh, I need to display. Okay, so I'm preparing that first. Okay, and once I prepare, okay, I am just displaying. Back. So I'm returning, you know, everything back to the function call. So if I just go and see the output of this, probably I'll just comment out this thing. Sorry, so, this. so if I just go and execute. This now, then we will see the output like this. So this is printing welcome Makran and this is printing the content of that array. You know, it's going to display like a list to me because I'm just adding them uh, in the li tag only. Okay. If I don't pass a value of a username, you no, know, so I'm just passing that value of a Hello, am I audible to you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lokesh. Yeah. So I will get, you know, if I don't pass the value of a username, I will get like this. Otherwise, um, I will get welcome message and this is the content I'm you know, uh, adding in the list and uh, once I add into a list, I'm just printing that content uh, over here. Okay, so um, so apart from doing this, uh, I can just go and add you know uh, this content web component uh, which we created in the lit i can add that web component into the react project also you know so this is one of my react project uh, you know i have already created react project let me just go and execute so that uh, it will be easy for us to uh, it is already executed It is already executed. So let me just go and start that. Okay. 
the project by using And I'm getting this piece, you know, out here is from is coming from a web component. Okay, so this is coming from a lit web component. Okay, so how I have included this lit component, you know, into the React component or into the React uh, project, you know, so there is. A simple wrapper I have provided. You know, so this is your lit web component. This is as simple as that. Uh, I have created a lit web component like this using uh, same reference CDN reference. I'm providing the you know web component like this, and I'm using this web component inside my root component of my React project. App.js. Okay, and if you look at that app.js, is actually creates a React component. Okay, or wrapper for React uh, component for the lit component. So if you want to use a lit component, you know, you will be uh, using like this. As of now, it is uh, you know available like this. You know, in the future. There might be a better way, you know, they will be uh, you know, uh, working out. But as of now, you'll have to go and create a wrapper, okay, for the lit component, okay. So by using create component function, you know, and the create component, I should pass an object as a parameter, okay. And to that create component, I'm passing, you know, just tag name, and you know what is the uh, element. Class, you know, so the element class is the welcome element. Okay, the tag name as welcome tag. So once you provide this wrapper over here, you know, you can use that you know, lit element into the React project like a normal component. Okay, so. Once you are able to include this wrapper, you will be able to use it over here, you know. And that create component is a part of, you know, lit lab. Okay, so this is the dependency I have already added uh, into the package dot system. Okay, so lit lab provides a create component as a wrapper function, which will help you to include. A lit web component inside a React. Okay. So once you include this, you will get you know, that message over there. Okay. Once you eliminate this, you will not see that message. That message is gone. Can you see? And once you include that. That message is come back. So I'm just displaying that over here. You can say confirm. Now I'm displaying from this web component. It is typo. So this is the output I'm getting from the React project. So in the React project also, I will be able to you know 
easily will be able to include uh, the lit components. Okay, guys. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much uh, for attending uh, you know, my session very patiently. And uh, that's it, uh, you know, for this session. Okay, uh, we will share uh, with you that material example, uh, you know, whatever I have added. So I'll just share it to you. Okay, so Chaitali will uh, share those uh, material with you. So she may be adding this uh, to uh, our synergetics GitHub library, and she will be, uh, you know, put, uh, you know, posting that, uh, you know, uh, the URL to you. Okay. So any any question do you want to uh, ask? Do you have any kind of a query? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lokesh. And thank you uh, for patiently listening. So do you have any any question? So start exploring lit uh, because you know, uh, lit is backed by Google, you know, so. OK, uh, the knowledge of lit uh, will help you a lot. OK, because it is marketed by Google, you know, so there is a chance of, you know, getting into a, you know, uh, popularity or getting into a highlight, you know, it's, you know, uh, it's relevant or it's more, more chances. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, guys.